Hello everyone, my name is AJ. I'm here from Kettering University, our robot in three days. I am here with you for our daily recap of day two. Over here we have our intake. We are definitely looking at going over the bumper as this allows you to store more in your tank, allowing you to hold more and be able to score more overall. Having just an extent, extendable tank allows you to overall be able to score more within that very small 25 second window. With this, we've also noticed while doing testing that the fabric of our bumper is very, very smooth when it comes to these game pieces. You can run the motor as much as you want. And at times, especially with the prunels parts itself, it doesn't tend to really collect it. You don't really have that touch and own aspect that you normally get with over the bumper intakes. But once you put it on a piece of plexi or some other type of surface, it picks up so fast and so super, super easy. Even if you're going out, going out just as bad, we're going with plexi just fine on fabric of the bumper, it just starts spinning there. It hits those pockets with in between the fabric and punul that you have those creases on, and that's where it tends to happen. With foam blocks, we don't have foam block movers, but I think it is a slight difference. You still have the issue of the fabric of the bumper where it's really, really smooth, giving you that kind of an issue where you have to try to find a new solution. So we plan to add plexi to the bottom side of our intake. It'll kind of just fold out with it, making sure we do have that touch and own that we think it will be really important with all these game pieces that out on the field and trying to only having these 25 second windows you want it as fast as possible other than that we have been looking at with our strategy being able to kind of just feed everyone we mentioned this in our last recap but we're going to go into a little more detail this time where we plan to stock the feeder station or the human player station or outposts we refer to as lebron because the human player can shoot um, and with that, by keeping that full, your two other teammates, when one of them goes empty during that 25 seconds, instead of running around collecting game pieces, they can just run over to the station. Human player lets it loose, everything falls out, and they get another quick cycle, allowing for quicker cycle times for that team, especially if they're like your best shooter on your team, allowing them you to get more game pieces scored point-wise. Speaking of points, we also noticed in the rule book. Not sure how this is actually handled first, or if the questions have been asked yet. We haven't looked at the Q and A's, but we noticed that it doesn't. It just says scored, not points. Uh, when it comes to those thresholds for 100 and 360, meaning we believe that you can actually just keep scoring even during the inactive period, and even though it won't give you points, it'll continue to get you closer to that ranking point, which is also going to be very important when you're setting your rankings and qualifications. How this will play out, I think you'll have two different strategies going in to, from qualifications to playoffs and playoffs are going to be focused more on gathering pieces up and filling your human player station to get those quicker cycles for points while you have someone playing defense. Giving that like, kind of passive defense and qualification, you'll have to see maybe harder defense during playoffs. Um, other than that, we actually have come up with an idea with doing a level one climb. We have the idea of using a climber in the box. And we actually want to use that sidebar to our advantage. On the level one, it has about six inches sticking out. And we are thinking of taking advantage. But if you ride your bumper along the side and then use the climbing hook to pull down, you are now creating extra force against this. For example, here, I'll do this. Giving you, a, it'll be a lot harder for you to tilt, allowing you just to hook over on one side, which actually leaves the potential of doing a triple climb if someone else can do the same thing. So then you have someone in the middle and someone on the far side allowing you to do three level ones, either an autonomous or teleop, depending on when you guys all plan on climbing. As something we plan to keep note of and we're going to try to get tested and finished putting on tomorrow or tonight, depending on how late we stay. Overall, that's kind of everything we've been going over today. It's been a lot of changing. Um, this is our robot. We're very happy with progress we got. We have a lot more we still really, really like to do and test. We guys hope you guys are also learning a lot and enjoying your season. Good luck out there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information.